We've seen how much life has been changed by the global pandemic and by lockdown. And of course, that's meant that for business in the UK and worldwide, we've all had to adapt and change the way that we work. So that really has had a tremendous impact on users and where employees are sitting to do their jobs. What the world has understood now is that it doesn't matter whether an, a good employee is in your office or whether they're working from home or a coffee shop or anything else. If they're a dedicated employee who are passionate about their role and they want to do a great job, they will do that from wherever they are. And that has been absolutely wonderful to see. So given that lockdown drags on and maybe in the UK is going to get a little bit uh, stronger over the next few weeks again, it really means that we need to think about how we serve those users and how we enable those employees who after all are the heart of most businesses to do their job in the best way possible. And really thinking about how we do that is the subject of our webinar which is coming up we'll be talking about how we can really put the user in the center of the network even though they may be sitting at home on their sofa they could be very remote from their normal place of work so really it's about a change of perception how do we enable that user to carry on with their job and to get their tasks done so that they can support your business in the best way and the answer to that really is, let's put them at the center of the network. Let's give them the best protection possible so that they are as protected, if not more, than they would be if they were in your normal office. And how do we then serve data to them in a way that they can best use it and enable them to be as productive as possible? Thank you for being here. Let's get started. to introduce my colleagues from Checkpoint. We're very, very fortunate to have Aidy and Gethin joining us from the Beyond the Perimeter team in Checkpoint UK. Um, we're really, really glad they're here. The reason for this uh, webinar really was thinking back to the first lockdown and I was sort of looking at network diagrams, you know, the sort of network diagrams we've had all had for 20 years or so which always put data in the center and then the wider network stretching out and computers and servers and so on. And then if you're lucky, you might just get a picture of a human or a depiction of a laptop somewhere near the edge of the paper. Well, of course, lockdown changed all that, didn't it? So it meant that all of a sudden we were all faced with the new challenge. How do we make sure that users have everything they need from wherever they are? So we've seen that develop over the last few months and here we are now in a new normal and I'm really looking forward to what AD has to say. Really this idea of user-centric security seems to have come to the fore over the last few months. Um, so let's get cracking. Morning AD, how are you? Are you well? I'm very well, thank you Liz. Very well, thank you. Great. I'm well, really pleased you could be here. Thank you for that. No worries. So, just to confirm, everyone can see my screen? I certainly can. Fantastic, fantastic. So I'm going to talk this morning a bit about how we can save you something much more important than money in the context of, of endpoint security and, and breach response, that thing being time. We're going to discuss how to minimise the number of endpoint incidents through not only prevention, but proactive prevention, leveraging things like threat hunting, our capabilities to close the the breach response gap by 90% through autonomous EDR. But most importantly, as Liz rightly said, what I hope you take away from this morning is given this new mode of operation that we find ourselves in due to the coronavirus situation, the perimeter now extends to the devices that we hold in our hands. And as such, security should be an enabler for our workforce, improving, not inhibiting productivity for our new breed of remote workers. But first, let's have a bit of a recap on why user-centric endpoint security is now much more important than ever. So this immediate shift to remote work caused by coronavirus has significantly changed the way that we work and live. Around the world, companies have had to make not insignificant infrastructure changes so their employees could work from home. Organisations shifting up to 100% remote working in comparison to maybe only 10 or 20% a year ago. This mode of operation is not new to most organisations, however, there are 
there are three major differences that make endpoint devices a more attractive target than ever. Firstly, before coronavirus, most companies kept their sensitive assets strictly protected, only allowing access from within their private networks to things like the development environment, access to source code and financial applications. Now companies have had to open remote access to these applications to ensure business continuity. Secondly, pre-2020, only a subset of employees used to work remotely, sales folks as an example, now everybody works from home. This fresh new remote workforce has never had to develop a high level of security awareness, given it used to be provided by a, that safe traditional security perimeter. Of course, this now extends the organization's attack surface, making our, our new remote workers susceptible to things like phishing and malicious emails, as an example. Lastly, working from home for such long periods of time in, in, in such a stressful situation, lockdowns, as an example, gradually eliminate our, our work-life boundaries, making us more prone to incautious behavior and, and maybe less compliance to corporate policy. Endpoints are more vulnerable because we, the people that operate them, are extremely challenged at the moment. We need to continue to deliver and maintain productivity whilst being surrounded by our families, which does draw us to the conclusion that um, endpoints are, are a much more attractive and, and, and vulnerable target than they've ever been before. Now, coupled to this, security folks that we work with are facing a whole new set of challenges to endpoint security. The overnight transition to remote working for security teams to react very quickly to enable business continuity, reviewing and, and changing policy, managing VPN configurations, not to mention the immediate need to equip so many employees that used to work in the office with secured laptops or at least some form of secure connectivity from a personal device. Now, providing secure connectivity at such scale to all corporate assets, including the, the, the sensitive, normally restricted data, naturally means more issues, disconnections, misconfigurations, resulting in, in more support tickets to address. And whilst the, the volume of tickets at our customers has increased, security teams in most organizations, unfortunately, haven't added additional resource to, to cope. And of course, these things are adding up to, to pre-existing challenges in the security of endpoints seen in the last few years. Companies are using multiple solutions of different vendors to secure their endpoint devices. Every time a, a new threat vector emerges, security teams are deploying new tools that don't necessarily integrate with the rest of their security stack. It can be somewhere between three or five solutions, including things like next generation antivirus, EDR, remote access, data protection, sandboxing, web security, I could go on. The point being that it's complicated in the best of times to, to manage and monitor security from completely different management consoles. Interestingly, Checkpoint undertook some research uh, earlier on this year and only 39% of security professionals that we interviewed were confident in their existing endpoint protection. What wasn't a perfect world has become significantly more challenging. And to complicate matters further, as we adapt, our adversaries have developed new strategies for breaching networks. In the last few months, our research teams here at Checkpoint have been paying close attention to some new cybercrime initiatives. The first trend is a global surge in ransomware attacks. In the last three months alone, the daily average of these attacks has increased by about 50% worldwide. As these attacks continue to mature in both frequency and intensity, their impact on business has grown pretty exponentially. In the last month, there have been reports about ransomware attacks targeting a, a shipping giant, a US-based broker, taking a watch manufacturer offline, and very recently in the last week, a campaign specifically targeting healthcare organizations. The second new trend is COVID-19-related phishing scams. Attackers have been leveraging social engineering techniques to exploit our all-consuming interest in the ongoing virus situation. We've observed thousands of malicious corona-themed domains being registered. And in this example, which appeared in Russia claiming to sell COVID-19-related testing kits, what the domain actually did was twofold. It was stealing people's personal information, and the domain was also being used as a tool to distribute malware to, uh, to endpoints. The last trend, Trend number three is Zoom related. During global lockdowns, the use of Zoom has skyrocketed from 10 million daily meeting participants in December to over 300 million in April. Our research folks here at Checkpoint have unearthed uh, malicious actors leveraging the popularity of this application to launch phishing attacks through Zoom related domain registrations. And we've also seen fake Zoom installation packages being cited as a major factor in the increase of malware distribution. Recently, uh, our research folks here at Checkpoint were able to help to mitigate the risk associated with a flaw in their customizable vanity URL feature. One allowed hackers to send Zoom, Zoom meeting invites that appeared associated with a particular user with the aim of inserting malware and, and, and stealing data. So 
With all those trends coming together, we're now facing a, a bit of a security perfect storm. We're working longer hours from home on endpoints with access to all of our corporate assets. We've got a significantly increased workload for security management and operations team. And we're seeing criminals go all out to leverage the opportunities presented in, in 2020, acting in an increasingly sophisticated manner. So what can we do to help? Well, when it comes to endpoint security, it means reevaluating our current approach to understand the, the, the gaps and opportunities. At Checkpoint, we advocate three core principles that should guide endpoint security transformation. First, focus has to shift to prevention. Detection and remediation is not enough. When we're more susceptible to threats through remote working, endpoint security solutions must have the capability to stop attacks before they ever reach the user or the, the actual device itself. Secondly, we've got to prepare for the worst. In the real world, with all of the attack sophistication and, and that surge in potential entry points due to remote working, we need to adopt an assumed breach mindset. We're going to talk a bit later on about how you need to have the, the right automation driven mechanisms in place to minimize the, the impact and response time to incidents. And lastly, simplicity is key. We can no longer afford having to switch between various consoles and solutions. The Ponemon's cost of a data breach report in 2019 suggested that the average time to contain a breach is 73 days currently, which is why we need to consolidate and, and streamline processes to act fast with efficacy, enabling us to focus and address what's critical. With that in mind, at Checkpoint, we have a solution called Sandblast Agent. It's a complete endpoint security solution built to protect the remote workforce from today's complex threat landscape, a solution guided by those principles we've just discussed. It prevents the most imminent threats to the endpoints, such as ransomware, phishing, or, or drive-by malware, was quickly minimizing breach impact with autonomous EDR. With SBA, we deliver the highest quality endpoint protection in a single, highly efficient and cost-effective agent. What gives us the confidence to make a statement like that? Well, our experience and feedback from the market at the moment is absolutely fantastic. Our agent's install base is growing exponentially, now serving thousands of customers around the world. On an annual basis, we prevent, detect and respond to millions of security incidents. First, I want to talk a bit about prevention capabilities and then discuss complete protection, stopping advanced threats from getting to those users and endpoints in the, in the first place. So the complete capabilities of, of Sandblast Agent are provided, provided in a way to ensure that endpoints have true multi-layered or, or 360 degree threat prevention. It starts with re reducing the attack surface, protecting data at rest and data in motion via our, our, via our VPN and endpoint encryption technology, post firewalling to, to prevent lateral movement within organizations, web browsing protection and endpoint compliance, ensuring that we get the, the basics right with good cyber hygiene. Once that surface is reduced, we leverage next generation antivirus, anti-malware, anti-phishing, sandboxing, and uh, CDR, content disarm and reconstruction technologies to prevent attacks before they start. Now, should something try and break through, Sandblast Agent has something we call runtime protection in place to uh, address and autonomously remediate attacks with behavioral analysis, anti-ransomware, anti-exploits, and a whole host of other technologies that enable us to, to automatically and completely remediate the entire cyber kill chain, removing all attack residue. It was recently confirmed that we protect against 25 of 25 of the top vulnerabilities exploited in the world, according to the NSA. But how do we ensure that the protections that we offer address any emerging threats? We do that with all kinds. In fact, over 60 AI and machine learning engines facilitating real-time data analysis. Our threat cloud service is constantly updated and enriched by advanced predictive engines, data from hundreds of millions of sensors around the world, cutting edge research from checkpoints and external intelligence feeds. Interestingly, we have more daily queries than Google by about a factor of 10. That scale is so important because it means we only need to see something once across our entire install base of technology, not just Sandblast Agent, for example, if we are identifying a strain of malware or a new targeted phishing campaign through our zero-day phishing technology. All of our customers and their users are protected in real time. Going back to the first of those three principles, the goal for us at, at Checkpoint being prevention first, our architecture pivots around two core security patterns in the context of content downloads, threat emulation and threat extraction. Threat emulation to open content in a controlled environment, a second generation CPU level sandbox to detect malicious behavior, and then threat extraction to proactively sanitize documents with no delays or impact to business productivity. We achieve this through CDR, removing any active code from the docs. Now, customer analysis indicates that in around two to 3% of instances, 
Users do require access to the original document. This solution is entirely self-catered with no intervention from a help desk required. And of course, providing the file is, the file is benign post emulation, the user can have access. The key message here being that we can proactively prevent attacks through threat emulation and threat extraction with zero impact on business productivity. Same with the, the theme of productivity, we provide that runtime protection against ransomware, malware, and folders attacks, providing instant and, and automated full attack remediation, both on and offline. There's no, there's no dependency here on connectivity. Once an anomaly or, or malicious behavior is detected, our behavioral guard blocks and remediates the full attack chain without leaving any malicious traces or attack residue. What anti-ransomware does is it identifies ransomware behaviors, such as encrypting files or attempts to compromise operating system backups and safely restores the ransomware encrypted files. We've got a, a, a vaulted space locally on the machine, only accessible to uh, a checkpoint sign process in case the, the malware attempts to form a shadow copy deletion, a pretty standard feature these days of, of modern ransomware. We provide autonomous remediation from ransomware attacks. The machine might lose any data, and more importantly, in the context of this morning's talk, the user won't be impacted by a ransomware attack. Staying with the theme of users, we're able to prevent employees from surrendering credentials to, to zero day and targeted phishing sites. In that scenario, the, in this scenario, sorry, the, the user is tricked into clicking on a link that's disguised as a, as a Microsoft sign-in request. This leads to a well-crafted targeted phishing site emulating the Office 365 login page. In this example, it's a, it's a new targeted campaign, therefore no threat intelligence information is available on the, name, on the domain. But that's okay, our zero phishing engine will dynamically scan the site upon access. The analysis includes domain reputation, similarity algorithms such as visual similarity and textual similarity, how many hits has the domain had, how long has it been up for, and by passing this information to an AI model that combines all of those inputs, we're able to provide a verdict in around a second. We can see that the phishing attack was detected, blocked, and the user is redirected to a, a warning page to educate and, and raise security awareness. Now, in addition to zero-day phishing, we offer preemptive phishing prevention and credential protection. Protection. We have the ability to block users from providing their corporate credentials via, via forms to, to non-business websites. So I'm going to move now uh, away from users and talk about the administrative side of the solution and talk a bit about how we leverage automation to take care of the, the vast majority of detection, investigation, and, and, and response tasks. So first, I'm going to focus on the on-device protections that are driven by automation. We automatically and in real time record uh, endpoint events for long-term retention in enriching these events with, with threat intelligence. Secondly, Behavioral Guard collects uh, indicators from endpoint devices and correlates them through behavioral heuristics, rules, and machine learning models. In addition, we're able to provide automatic quarantining of infected machines. The attack itself won't spread naturally across organizations to, to, to uh, across the, the network, sorry, to, to the rest of the organization. The next thing we do is we, we sterilize and fully recover any of the, the, the tampered or, or encrypted files. This is followed then by automatic remediation and actually sterilization of the entire cyber kill chain so you can restore the device to its last known clean point. Lastly, we provide full visibility into the actions taken with uh, an auto automatically generated forensics report. The report gives the ability to, to then initiate proactive threat hunting. HPA can also make sure that if, should you want to, that the users themselves are actually informed that the, the attack itself uh, has been remediated and all of the automated actions taken. So what does this actually mean for administrators? Well, it means they can, they can then focus on the, the more important tasks while Sandblast Agent takes care of the, the rest, spending less time on manual actions for detection, analysis, investigation, and, and, and response. We also provide larger visibility into, into potential attack residue. So let's take a look at um, what perspective is provided for security admins with the auto automatically generated forensic analysis report. We're able to help you quickly determine um, is what just happened a, a, a real attack? What processes and connections were kicked off on that endpoint? What type of attack was it? What was the impact on our business? What files were encrypted? How did the attack get in in the, in the first place? Um, how was the system compromised? We can provide information on, on what remediation steps were taken and, and how, can I, uh, how can I clean up my systems? We then also provide correlation of the attack against the, the MITRE attack framework, something I'll talk a bit more about in a, in a moment. And lastly, we were able to give you visibility of the attack, so the, the story behind the events. This robust 
attack diagnostic and, and visibility capability uh, capability to allow system administrators to really effectively triage and re resolve attacks, significantly reduce the amount of time you would spend on analysing uh, incidents. You're provided with these contextualised insights and, and, and mitigation steps, which, they, which we can then use to proactively hunt for attack residue, leveraging our threat hunting capability. This is a, a super powerful platform that enables you to uh, hunt and investigate incidents really, really quickly. In this example, we're using the, the, the MITRE framework. It's a knowledge base of uh, adversary tactics and techniques, and that the framework provides intelligence and information based upon real world observation. In this example here, we're going to take a look at something called Maze. It's a, it's a piece of ransomware, and we're going to we're going to look at the list of techni techniques used by the ransomware in the MITRE attack matrix. We choose uh, the uh, attack within the dashboard. In this example, we're going to use the inhibit system recover attack technique. We can click on it and see more details. More importantly, it will provide us with some predefined queries that enable, will enable us to, to look at the relevant events and continue that investigation. In this example, we can see that it was observed 244 times across two machines. Now, if we run that first query, what we'll do is we'll get a list of all of the, the, the relevant events. Now, what you'll see is even though all of the processes uh, on the left-hand side in green are benign, some of the, the, the parent processes, processes are, are not, the example being the, the python underscore setup.exe. What we can do now is actually quarantine the processes and continue the investigation to track all possible yet to be activated backdoor processes in, within our organization's uh, uh, estate. Uh, we can then offer uh, some remediation steps. So, for example, we can quarantine those devices off the network. We can trigger further forensic analysis. So before we open up the session to, uh, to Q&A, I wanted to close by providing some context to the, 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 the phenomenal TCO and value that Sandblast agent provides. It's important to highlight this is a, a, a single agent with unified management covering endpoint protection, that autonomous endpoint detection and response, threat hunting, machine learning, and AI-driven behavioral next generation antivirus, data protection and remote access and, and web browsing protection. The, the real value is that it enables organizations to streamline processes and reduce TCO by collapsing a a whole host of endpoint services into a single light agent. Traditionally, a lot of the organizations that we work with have had dedicated standalone solutions for a lot of these services. With, with our agent, you're getting all of that within one pane of glass, correlated, automated, and actionable to provide the most comprehensive single agent endpoint protection platform currently available. We've already talked a bit about operational simplicity being a must, going back to those uh, three principles of, of endpoint uh, security. We offer super easy deployment and management. In fact, uh, customers and partners can, can self on board and, and deploy an agent in minutes with seamless upgrades and again, to, to come back to our theme of users, not disrupting end, end users. We provide various management options and through our, our, our state-of-the-art interface, we offer simplified management and monitoring of, of all of the endpoint protections that we've discussed, policy creation and, and the ability to practically hunt for threats in, in one place. Again, referring back to those three principles, simplicity is key. We can't afford anymore having to switch between various consoles and the various solutions, given that, that time is such a, a critical factor in response. Now, of course, uh, our agent is not an island. At Checkpoint, we offer a, a, a much wider enterprise security architecture that we, we call Infinity. It's the, the glue that holds wider security transformation and orchestration together, covering all major attack surfaces, providing that consolidated management experience and, and actionable threat visibility and, and intelligence and security automation, not only across endpoints, but entire organizations. So endpoint transformation and lowering TCO really boils down to three things. Firstly, reducing the cost of software that needs to be purchased through consolidation, making endpoints themselves more efficient through a reduction in deployed agents, and most importantly, reducing security man hours invested in deployment management uh, detection and response tasks. One of the things we hear a lot from customers is that this is a solution that's quite easy to deploy and manage. And on top of that, we have that advantage of automating 90% of what are normal, normally manual and, and pretty tedious detection, investigation and, and remediation tasks. When we look at the alternative of using multiple solutions, the value is, is, is really clear. This single unified agent saves the overhead of, of installing, configuring and training teams on three or five disparate technologies. So, to summarise, these days, security teams do indeed face a bit of a perfect storm with all, all kinds of challenges to providing efficient endpoint protection and response. Complete endpoint protection is crucial to, firstly, where possible, minimise response man hours through the highest quality proactive prevention. 
through autonomous EDR, close that breach response gap by automating investigation response and remediation tasks, and lastly, becoming operationally efficient and reducing time by streamlining endpoint services down to a single agent. The agent that we've discussed today is, is there to prevent the most imminent threats to the endpoint, but the real value is time saved and a minimization in, uh, of breach impact through autonomous detection and response. All the protection needed in a, a single efficient and, and cost effective solution. And hey, you don't need to take uh, my word for it, we've got thousands of customers around the world that, that are now securing their endpoints with, <coughs> excuse me, with Sandblast agents. Um, I'd, like, I'd love to share a, a quote from, from one of our customers. Uh, he's a CTO in, uh, in the public sector, Russell Walker. When Sandblast agent suspects a threat, it quarantines endpoints off the network to prevent potential damage from spreading. That feature saves time for a small team with limited resources. Amazingly, all this happens in the background, neither user or endpoint is impacted or even aware. Less time, less effort, less worry. So with that in mind, I would encourage you to take a look for yourselves. Our, our wonderful partner, Lithify, would be happy to support demos, trials, proof of concepts, and, and let's see how we can help you implement those three principles to taking back control of endpoint security. Thanks for listening, folks. I'm going to hand back to Liz now for a bit of Q&A. Thank you very much, Aidy. That was fantastic. And I'm loving the new slides and the latest developments that you were just able to share with us. So um, that was awesome. Thank you very, very much. There is so much interesting content in that presentation and you raised so many interesting points. Can I bring uh, Gethin online as well? Gethin, are you there? Gethin is um, one of Aidy's lovely colleagues and we adore him. We've been working with Gethin for, gosh, well, I was going to say far too many years. It's probably that, isn't it, really? <laughs> well, we love working together. So, um, gosh, there were so many interesting points there. And I don't know whether to start with the nitty gritty or with the big concepts. Um, we were talking in the chat about this idea of us and them. And guess from your perspective, having been an IT manager yourself and having understood that old world of IT where it was very much IT versus the users. How do you feel about that now? How's that changed, do you think? Um, believe it or not, COVID has actually changed it. Um, it was always a case of them and us mentality. It's, oh, well, uh, uh, the typical user, oh, I never installed anything. Really, then why have you got 150 <laughs> icons down there? Um, so it's always <laughs> been a case of stopping the end users breaking things. Uh, but now we're, now we're all doing the, the COVID. There's so many phishing texts coming through, phishing emails, malware coming through. My Facebook feed is literally full of, have you seen this? I got this message. I've had this email through. So the users are more aware anyway. It's great. We're all becoming aware of the cyber threats out there and unfortunately the fake news as well. But the cyber threats are being prepared. So the user experience of Sandblast Agent, as I was typing in the chat, what is the user experience? Nothing. It just sits there, a little padlock icon sitting on your sys tray or a little icon in your web browser. You don't even notice it's there uh, until you go to a fraudulent website or until you go to a website that's Bitcoin mining using your CPU and your RAM. And all you're sat there going, this web page is a bit slow. <laughs> so it's these sorts of things that it just blocks by default. So as, as Adi was saying about the, the ransomware, it's like, what do we do if we've got ransomware? No, oh, don't panic. Just sit and watch the screen and smile as everything's restored. Or just get on with your job and let it run in the background and do its job. This is the best user experience for Stamblast Asian. The reason it's also the best IT experience is minimal amount of technical support calls. So none of those calls saying I can't get my printer to work anymore because your, antivi your antivirus has stopped it connecting or your um, uh, any kind of security software you've got has stopped it talking to your local network. So suddenly you can't connect to Wi-Fi. All those technical support calls, they don't happen with Sandblast Agent. Yes, I am prepared to argue the toss on that one. Uh, <laughs> I've, uh, I've supported a lot of stupid people over the years. Uh, yeah, let's just not go there. Um, but yeah, with Sandblast Agent, it makes life so much more easier to secure my workforce. The other thing is, is the privacy. Privacy is not mentioned enough. We are not here to spy on your end users. And um, so, for instance, when AD was talking, I may or may not have checked out my Facebook feed. 
Um, does um, does my MIS uh, guys at uh, Checkpoint know this? No, they don't care. As long as they are, as long as they are happy with the security that I have in place, I can do my job and get on with my life at the same time. Full well knowing that Sandblast agent is just sat there in the sys tray, just doing its job. I'll oh, shut up. Yeah. No, no, I think that's absolutely brilliant. And if somebody, obviously, we're all considering these as users, we tend to flip, don't we, between our desktops and laptops and our mobile phones, which um, we all have and we all quickly respond to things when we're supposed to be doing something else. Um, if somebody were considering this kind of protection, how um, how important is it that mobiles are included in that? Is that something for everyone, do you think, these days? It's all the same attack surface. It's, so everyone's concentrating on the cloud. Um, so we're all going to AWS or we're all going to Azure, GCP, Ali Cloud, Oracle Cloud, and there's about 10 other, other cloud vendors out there. But what about the devices that are connecting to the cloud? So you've got your mobiles, which is exactly the same as, as a laptop, as far as I'm concerned. My entire life is on my mobile, um, admittedly. Uh, at the moment because I haven't left the house so I haven't booked any hotels or trains or flights or anything like that but I do that on my mobile I don't do that on my laptop it's the same attack surface whether it's what I'm looking at now or whether it's on my mobile phone itself which is over here it's the same thing Liz it's absolutely the same thing same sort of security as well uh, and the fact that the management is in the cloud so um, anybody um, running Sunblast agent they don't have to worry about backing up the server. They don't have to worry about upgrading the server. We do it all for them. If the server needs to be have more cores because you've got more clients, it's not your problem. We automatically add the cores in. And you never have to send an update to users either, do you? Oh, sorry, AD, I, was, I, I didn't realise. No, I, I, was just, I was just going to share a, um, a, a personal a, a anecdote, actually, which is actually quite relevant to, to the context of your, your conversation around mobile devices. Um, but before I do that, I'd like to provide a, a little context. So uh, obviously we have a, a very large threat research team here at Checkpoint. It's, it's the best part of 1,500 people and we track a lot of trends. Um, and one of the trends that we've seen specifically here in the UK is a dramatic increase in SMS phishing campaigns. Um, <laughs> you know where I'm going with this, don't you? Um, yeah. And it's, it's, quite, it's quite interesting that we've seen these SMS phishing campaigns improve in sophistication. These are really well crafted SMSs with tiny URLs from people purporting to be the HMRC, uh, our mobile operators, and we've even seen a, a few requesting people reset their Office 365 login credentials. Personal story I have for this is that as, a, as a, an EE customer, I got a text, text message saying they were unable to take payment for my EE bill the day that my bill was due to go out. Now, of wow. course, I'm, I'm a fairly busy individual, and the first thing I did was thought, oh God, they can't, they, I can't pay my phone, but so I clicked on the link and went to input my corporate credentials, uh, sorry, my login details for, for EE. Luckily, because I'm a Checkpoint uh, employee, I get Sandblast Mobile on my uh, iPhone, and that prevented me from giving up my personal login details to that phishing campaign. So I think actually, the, the attack surfaces, or, or the, the, uh, the scope for um, compromising our, our remote workforce has changed slightly this year in that people are, are looking for slightly more sophisticated ways to, to get access to those login details and those credentials. And they're actually going after people on their mobile devices more now than they have done before. I get the same thing, AD, with O2. Every time my bill comes out, I get a text purportedly from O2 saying you haven't paid your bill. But have you not noticed the conversation we're having? Um, I, I realise I'm, I'm putting on my sales hat and I do apologise, but the conversation we're having, ha ha, I've had a smishing text, ha ha, I've had an email, we're laughing about it. It's not serious because we're automatically protected. So we get the ability, we get the ability to sit here and talk about this, but it doesn't, it, it, we've not been affected, we've not taken our machines offline, you've not had your credit card or your bill payment stolen because you are protected. But the, the, the point I would, I would make is that um, I'm someone who personally evangelizes about the dangers of things like phishing, and yet I fell for it. Yeah. That's quite embarrassing, but it, it gives you an idea of the, the level of um, craft and sophistication that they're putting into these 
uh, uh, SMS phishing campaigns now. It, I, I had no idea that it was a phishing text. No idea. They are just so sophisticated, and somehow they always get you when you're trying to simultaneously unload the shopping, stop the dog from running into the road, and do 12 other things yeah. as well because you know you've, you've got other family members shouting at you because they need things as well. It's just typical, isn't it? And in that one moment, and you get the thing that says PayPal's going to shut down your account because it's just so easy to click that text, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. The, the emails now, uh, the PayPal, the AWS, the Amazon Prime emails as well, uh, we're seeing a high uptake in account takeovers. So the email that you're getting uh, purporting to be from Amazon no longer says dear user or dear email address. In my case, it's dear Mr. Jones. So they're actually getting my name and details. So it looks more and more like legitimate email. But I, I still love the fact that we can talk about this and we can talk about these threats. Um, but we haven't suffered any of these issues because we are being protected by Sandblast Agent and Sandblast Mobile. Um, as you've ever heard me talk before, I always talk about the nastiest phishing email that I ever got, uh, oh. which was a couple of weeks. It's a couple of weeks after having a medical. Uh, I got an email through saying, dear Mr. Jones, um, here are the results of your blood test. which show a very low white blood cell count, um, which is highly indicative of cancer. Could you please print off the attached PDF, which contains your blood test results and take to your GP immediately? I, I didn't read any further than the big C. That was it. I opened the document. But threat emulation had already run the document through and given me a copy of the document. So I didn't have the original. So I could immediately see it was full of rubbish information. And the report that came back was it was also full of ransomware. Oh dear. So that was blocked because we're all about multi layer threat prevention. So the email came through the phishing protection that I had. It was a very well written email. And it was obviously on the back of an account takeover because um, a Trojan, however it had worked, taken over a machine and just grabbed a whole load of email addresses and names and sent out a, a bunch of emails like this. But the problem is, is there was nothing wrong with the email apart from that attachment. And our sandblast, our zero day, picked it up immediately, so nothing happened. Mm. But it's, it doesn't matter how, as I was saying on the chat, it's like a them and an us. We're all in the same boat at the moment. We're all more vulnerable than we ever have been. Okay, the and hospitals have been shocked the closest. Quite yeah. right, and we, none of us have colleagues we can turn to and go, hey, Tom, does this look right to you? Because it looks a bit funky to me. We're not sitting in that kind of an office environment where we can just solicit views from other colleagues um, just organically as we ordinarily would, because we're all sitting on our own on our sofas, um, in our dining rooms, in my case, and, you know, just getting on with it, aren't we? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's just, it's so, it's so nice to see that the security now is partnered up with usability. So uh, we don't have end users trying to break their, their security so they can do their job. Uh, we don't have users trying to break their security because they've got an hour spare. And you know what, I'll catch up on the latest episode of whatever's trending at the present mm -hmm. moment in time. I'm just going through Game of Thrones again because I've, I've watched everything else at the moment. Is we can all do that and we're still secure and we can still do our job. So your Absolutely. employees are happier because they're not being spied on or their machines aren't running so slow they're unusable. But you're happy as well because they're all so secure at the same time. Secure connectivity, multi-layered threat prevention is what it's all about. Your anti-phishing hasn't worked. The virus may have come through or the zero day phishing attack that no one's ever seen before. Sandblast agent plugin for um, browsers will automatically check the website on the fly. So it's not just a case of looking at a signature. Oh, this is a dodgy website. It will actually look at the website you're going to as opposed to the website you're supposed to be going to. So we'll run them both side by side. AI machine learning algorithms make sure that you're going to the right website and off you go. All that happens in the background, you see absolutely nothing apart from a massive warning on the screen going, this is the wrong web page. Exactly. Um, we, as IT administrators, we no longer have to send that email, which we always get loads of moans and groans, that says, um, tomorrow night I'm going to be updating your laptop and you won't be able to use it for half an hour or whatever it is. We don't have to do any of that, do we? Do you remember those days where somebody would always say, but I'm trying to work on a great big presentation and that's going to derail my life? 
we don't have to do that at all, do we? How important do you think it is that we have joined up protection? As um, AD put it in his presentation, he was talking about this one solution that does it all. Why is that so important, do you think? Um, I don't know because I wasn't listening, Liz, because I was reading one of the questions in the chat. <laughs> At least I'm on. Um, sorry, it's, it's just been reading about the communicating awareness to threats and best practices. Um, I was an IT security manager when SQL Slammer came out, and all my SQL programmers said, we don't need antivirus, we've got a gateway. It's been a serious uphill struggle to actually get users to be aware of security until 2020. This year has been ridiculous. If it could have gone wrong, it has gone wrong this year. I find myself with less of an argument with end users. It's more of a discussion. End users are now prepared to listen because they've seen their friends on Facebook getting the texts and the emails and the malware. They actually discuss it, um, which I have never seen before this year. So it's gone from being a massively huge uphill struggle. We've got to sort the connectivity. We've got to sort the networking. We've got to sort the servers. What about the security? Oh, we don't need security. We just need to get the connectivity sorted. No. You can get the connectivity sorted and the security at exactly the same time, which is what it's supposed to be. I mean, in reality, uh, before this year, it's always been connectivity and productivity. Yeah, we'll add a bit of security in as well. We might want to do that. Now it's all coming in the way it should have done in the first place. So it's less of an uphill struggle now. It's WebExes like this as well also help to educate. But I always find that this is a better to have a conversation as opposed to just having a bunch of slides and going, yes, this is all well and good. What's it like? Find out. Run a POC. Portal.checkpoint.com. You can spin up a POC 30 days. Uh, give Liz a call and sort out any details you need, any help you may need. Very, very simple to do. And yes, Sandblast Agent does sit alongside traditional AV, and it doesn't matter what the AV is, whether it's ours, yours, theirs. As long as it logs, system logs, then Sandblast Agent Behavioral Guard and Forensics and Anti-Ransomware will listen to the AV, especially Behavioral Guard. If you actually get into the technical details of how they all tie in together, it's just phenomenal. Yeah, so we, we have the option to do both. We can play very nicely with an existing AV solution, or we can replace it as our solution does contain antivirus as well. It's just an antivirus engine. It's all the other stuff now is the next generation. We can't use next generation anymore. The only reason we use next generation was because of Star Trek, and that was like 20 years ago. We should be on next, next, next generation now. COVID <laughs> generation. We have some other comments in the chat as well. Um, lovely Steve Pearson, morning Steve, is saying um, he's seen three different SMS attacks recently, um, including a very convincing one from Lloyds Bank, which uh, sounds pretty nasty. Um, that's just another example. We are seeing so many of these, aren't we? Has anybody had a phone call yet? I've had a couple of recorded, I mean, I realise we're talking about computers. But I've actually had a phone call, a recorded message saying HMRC need to process your tax details. Please press one to talk to HMRC now. If you do not communicate with us, an arrest warrant will be issued. And then the phone, and it stops. It's like, oh. yeah, so exactly. I have pressed the number one key, but literally across the board now, we are all vulnerable. I realise it makes us sound like, oh, no, I'm all vulnerable. But no, we are all more vulnerable. And all the malicious actors out there are taking advantage of this. I mean, why would you not? Mm -hmm. said, yeah, you're not going to answer this email at work. That's absolutely fine. But if you sat at home, um, um, maybe watching the last season of Game of Thrones and not really paying attention, then you're more liable to click on the link. More vulnerable. Probably because so, you're sorry, so cool. And, and the ending of Game of Thrones was such a travesty, but that's just my personal view. We could uh, have a big discussion about that, I'm sure. Um, Larson is saying, is a question for you, and I think you've answered some of it, but what barriers do you come across uh, when communicating the awareness of threats and best practice to your user base? When you were an IT manager, what was your biggest concern there? What, did you, what problems did you face in getting the message over? 
if we go if we go back to then, it was um, the fact that if you had an antivirus system, and it was mainly antivirus, if you had an antivirus system that did its job properly, the machine practically became unusable. So you genuinely had to balance security and usability, and security kind of went away, and it was more down to the usability. So many times, so many times, having to boot a laptop in safe mode and disable services because you got malware installed. It was just such a pain to do. Um, Sandblast Agent does it all for you. The Forensics Blade, which we don't talk about enough, um, literally comes along at the end of any issue or malware or malicious act and does the caretaker job of putting the chairs on the tables and sweeping up. Checks all the files, checks all the details, replaces them with the original. No reboot, no safe boot. The technical support calls that, in fact, the technical support call I got yesterday at about 11 o'clock at night, very much, um, was just a case of um, just watch. Right, wait, it's, I've got ransomware. Not a problem. Just watch. Right. OK, now what do I do? Nothing. You're done. And the customer, the customer was so surprised. It's like, um, <laughs> what do I need to do? I don't know. It just works, mate. Just off you go. So the struggles that I'm having now with security is a lot less than it used to be. Um, it was always an uphill struggle. Now it's more of an escalator struggle. So at least they're, 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 they're prepared to listen to me now. But as I was saying earlier, the Facebook updates and everything else, everything, everyone is becoming more cyber aware. They have no choice. Um, and please bear in mind that I live down in Glastonbury, uh, so I'm full of hippies. So if anybody's going to click on a fraudulent link, it's going to be them. I don't have any issues at all. Sandblast Asian covers across the board. Yes, I do install it on my friends' computers. Um, and we've done that too as well in the Lithify family, for example. We've said, especially for my parents, bless them, I love them to pieces, but they don't get what malware is. <laughs> just, they'll just click anything and then worry about it later. So, phew, that's taken a uh, load off my shoulders. So, I think we ought to end on this one because I'm aware that time is marching on, but it's the big question, and Jonathan has asked it. How does your product compare to others in the market? And I think I'll let you two have a go, and then I'll throw in my four penneth on that one, if I may. Go for it. Right, first game. Um, yeah. well, so the first thing I would do is I would recommend looking at third-party and independent testing. Um, and I, I put some in the chat that I, I would recommend checking out. Uh, we, we fared very well against our peers in the market in the, in the most recent NSS Labs test uh, for advanced endpoint solutions. I like NSS Labs because these are the guys that will actually take the solution and test it. They'll put it through the mill. They'll throw um, malware at it. It's not um, an opinion piece. It's actually a real world tested piece. The, 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 to, to provide some context about where we're really strong in the market, it's this notion of automation. We, we take a lot of the tasks that you would normally have to do manually with other antivirus or, or anti-malware solutions, and we automate that process for you. So it's it's really, really good for people that don't have a lot of time to uh, invest in investigation and remediation and response. Over to you, Gethin. Um, yes, NSS Labs, absolutely fantastic when they were in existence. Uh, obviously, they upset somebody this year because they're no longer there anymore. You look on LinkedIn, the CEO's after a job. A uh, really good guy worth employing. Um, but yeah, if you want to find out um, how good we are, uh, look at the reports, look at the details. Doesn't I mean, really tell how good we are. We can we can say, look at this NSS report, 100%, 99%, 99.91%. Um, stupidly high figures. Yes, yes, we know it's all secure. That's not so much an issue now because our competitors say the same thing. And I would also say, before we hand back to, to Liz as well, I'd, I'd highly recommend you test it for yourself. Uh, which was exactly what I was about to say. You got there, you stole my thunder, man. Oh, oh dear. Dear. How come I don't do that? Don't well. <laughs> right, I, I, we've, had, we've had some um, brilliant POCs. Uh, we've had a POC uh, that went wrong, horrifically wrong, um, because the customer was using malware for remote connectivity. Um, it did kind of end up in an argument. There, there were beers and coffees involved, so it wasn't that too bad. But the customer was genuinely using malware for his remote employees to connect into the network. Uh, so the oh. argument's saying, you know, can you whitelist this malware? And it's like, no, because it's malware. And so <laughs> we need whitelisting. Stop using malware. Um, so 
have a POC, make sure it works in your environment. Don't use malware for remote connectivity. As much as it is a pain uh, to do a, uh, a try it first, you must try it. It's down to your personal preference. Does this work for you? Do you like the management GUI? Has everything that AD, Liz and Gethin said correct? Does it just sit there on the sys tray and do nothing? Just because we're 99 or 100% secure, if you don't like the way that it works, you need to look at another. You need to look at another vendor. It is genuinely down to you. Obviously, Checkpoint's been here for 27 years. We're a pure play security vendor. We invented stateful inspection on the gateway, which we'll never let you forget. Um, so we all, all concentrate on the security side of things, but it's down to you, your usability. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Would you prefer some additional details? Would you prefer to do something else? It's all down to you. Please try a POC. It's, you're not going to get a hard sell. AD's not going to come around your house, knock on the door, door, knock on the door, wearing a mask, obviously, because he's secure, and demand that you buy the product after you've had a POC. Have a look at these products. Yes, it does take time. Yes, it is worth it, because the product that you end up with is the product that provides the security you need, and you like using it. That's the main thing for me. And, and you're both incredibly modest, but actually all I would like to add to that really is that we've done um, quite a number of deployments and we've done POCs, which by the way, the POC I should mention is incredibly low touch, really. You, even if you're not a checkpoint customer in your core firewalls, it doesn't matter. It's a cloud portal. We can set it up for you very easily. And we've even run POCs in line with things like um, ATP and Sophos and Malwarebytes and others, just so that people can see how differently that performs. Um, and really, it, it works incredibly well. Um, anecdotally, for organizations, we've had people moving across from other vendors, um, like Sophos, for example, who actually thought they would never move, and they've been with that product for quite a number of years, and they were very happy with it. Um, they've seen what Sandblast Agent can do, and they've made the switch. And that's been really lovely to see. And these are not knee-jerk reactions. These are people who think about things very thoroughly before they make a decision. Uh, and I'm really glad that those products are doing a great job for them. So it's been we can share more examples with you um, on a one-to-one -one basis for obvious reasons. But um, it really has been really gratifying to see. So um, it's the only product that we um, we recommend for a very good reason. Um, Lithify, as you know, is all about doing things properly. This is not about just trying to sell you something, anything, and not caring whether it works. This is absolutely about giving organizations solutions which absolutely sing and do an amazing job, and we're passionate about that. That's why we partner with Checkpoint for this stuff. Um, and Everybody knows I'm a massive Checkpoint fangirl. It won't come as a massive surprise to the Checkpoint people on the call to hear that. And I'm sure some of you who know me personally will also know that actually once you get me started talking about this stuff, you can't shut me up. So on that basis, um, please, if you think a POC would be useful, we can arrange it for you very quickly. So don't be shy. Let's get it on and just see if we can get that working for you. Um, let's see what we do. It's been lovely to have you all here um, on the call today. AD and Gethin, it's been wonderful to have you um, presenting to us and discussing these issues as well. Thank you so much for joining and for supporting um, our customers and Lithify. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. You know how much we, we love working with you. So on that basis, thank you everyone for coming along. It's been lovely to see you all. And I'll hopefully see you next time. I'm sure we'll be publishing the next date shortly, just making sure we don't get in the way of that funny Christmas thing. But uh, we will be back again very soon. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate your participation. As a thank you, we're offering free trials of the products you've seen today, and we'll be in touch to continue discussions. We look forward to speaking to you again. Many thanks.